So I was in a cinema yesterday, and we were watching La Not, which is, you know, oh, La Notte, whatever the Italian for night is. And um, it was a very sort of, you know, serious audience. And suddenly it's the beginning part, which is usually quite slow in Antonioni films, so my mind is drifting. Um, and I suddenly think, what would be the worst, most disruptive thing I could do in this room right now? And it occurs to me that what that would be was to get my phone out, turn the phone on, load up YouTube, get the Baby Shark song up there, and just play it out loud, mm. like, screen on my head facing backwards. Very nice. And I tried, just for my own reasons, I tried to convince myself I was about to do it. <laughs> but I couldn't get over the fact that I would never do it. But I just wanted to feel, just for a moment, like, mm. yeah, I'm actually in the process of doing this. <laughs> I wanted to, I just wanted to decide to do it, and then organically decide to not do it a few moments later, but I couldn't. And I felt that was some sort of weakness on my part. It's tough. You've really got to believe it, and you've really got to be able to envisage everything that's going to happen. So you, you, you've really got to get some sort of attention disorder and just let your mind go away with it for you to really feel that 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 fear and self-loathing. Well, see, I feel like he was trying a little, like, there's just too much to it. That takes pulling out the phone and all this stuff. There's something to be said for a primal guttural scream and gyration down the middle aisle. Just say. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> I also thought of the phone, um, but I thought of maybe just putting that exact film up on YouTube and watching it on your phone instead. <laughs> they would fucking hate that. Sorry, I'm short-sighted, but like two <laughs> seconds behind. Yeah. So like... It's actually better on the bon phone. Buongiorno, <laughs> It's made for small screens, this one. It's all for small screens these days. It is, isn't it? Damn, Nolan's dead. Spiritually. <laughs> Podcast that always asks for a lot of nuts. <laughs> we tend to get it too. It's a lot of nuts. Ample salt. It is a lot of nuts. I'm a lot of nuts. <laughs> and this week we are joined by Matthew Whitaker from Screen Mayhem and many other things. Matt, how the hell are you? Excellent, thank you. It is truly, truly an honor. I've, anyone who knows me knows your show is my favorite show. Oh. So uh, it is like it's like I'm on Captain Kangaroo as a kid, or um, if you, <laughs> people don't get that, you know, something like I don't know, being on the the Disney show that had Christina Aguilera. It's just like that. It's like being on the Timmy Mallet show in England really... for, for our UK <laughs> listeners. <laughs> You're so welcome, man. Good to um, have you. And you have brought with you Kung Pao Off. into the fist. I have. If you truly are the chosen one, then you must bear the sacred mark <laughs> to deliver the people from the forces of darkness and to check out the hotties. 20th Century Fox invites you to feel the fury. Taste the passion. And witness the utter madness. I, it was, this was one of those I agreed with uh, a few of the people. It's just like, well, how could this ever be criticized? But um, it was just... <laughs> have to get it we'll see <laughs> well there'll be none of that here kung pao is a bad film <laughs> the demented brainchild of steve oderkirk a terrible man who took 1978 film tiger and crane fists redubbed rearranged and re-digitally inserted himself into various scenes the film <laughs> critics correctly derided the film awarding it a 13 percent on rotten tomatoes and 14 percent on metacritic matthew guffman over at the San Francisco Chronicle says, Full of flatulence jokes and mild sexual references, Kung Pao is the kind of movie that's critic-proof, simply because it aims so low. It was oh. the mild sexual uh, oh. references that critics are immune to. <laughs> they need them strong. If it was stronger references, it would have been very much a case of, yeah. yes, this is provocative. It's the mildness of them. Exactly, that's what critics hate. Just go hard or go home. <laughs> All the time. Robert K. Elder at the Chicago Tribune said, Not since Freddy got fingered has a major release been so painful to sit through. Well, you know what? <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. You know it says Elder in his name? Old people. Oh, hey, hey, old people yeah. don't have joy in their hearts anymore. <laughs> Maybe go find a lady at church and have sex. <laughs> All <Yes>. old people. <laughs> old people. <laughs> Come on, old people. Where's... Listen to this. Nan, if you're listening. Hey, where's on. that Suspiria guy? M my old mate. <laughs> Come on. 
your old man who enjoys the Can we watch Kung Pao with us? <laughs> Freddy Goffing is great. <laughs> oh, Christ. Uh, the public quite liked it, of course. It has a 6.2 on IMDb and seems to have a cult following. It says that on Wikipedia and there's no citation whatsoever, so it must be true. Does Wikipedia say seems to have a cult following? Or is that your little <laughs> garnish? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's def- that's word for word off Wikipedia, sir. It says seems to somehow... <laughs> Against all odds, <laughs> for some fucking reason, <laughs> italicized. Jay Davison at Amazon says, Curious, read the reviews below, ignore the one with two stars. I dare you to get through this film without crying with laughter or mindlessly muttering catchphrases to your work colleague for years. <laughs> after, for years after, like, that's a lot of nuts. <laughs> birdie, birdie. It's a net and it's tiny. Wee wee <laughs> whoosh. You should be able to beat him now, etc., etc. <laughs> give it a chance. The first five minutes are a little slow, but at least give it to the opening credits. My household had to pause the video to get tissue to dry eyes and blow noses. <laughs> we had to keep rewinding the film because we were laughing all over the dialogue. Please, please see this film. It's genius. Stupid but clever. All over the dialogue. Yeah, Great. you know, it makes me think that a lot of the official critics have never seen a 70s kung fu movie. Because <laughs> there's just joy in that too. But also, I mean, come on, put it up against any kind of standard criticism and they're mostly garbage. <laughs> <laughs> totally unfounded. We can all agree what? about that. We can all agree about Five Deadly Also, Men. this guy, um, he has <laughs> a colleague, did he say? A work colleague. Now, is that before or after <laughs> yeah, he started talking colleague. about Kung Pao into the fist? <laughs> <laughs> Tissues to dry eyes and blow noses. So all these people are dying. They all have consumption. <laughs> and this is the last few maddening, crazed minutes. <laughs> Tissues is all we got. <laughs> Armin Ali on Google says, Kung Pao into the fist movie Hindi. Clearly fucking lost man, Armin Ali. <laughs> Somebody help this man. He's typing his search terms into fucking reviews. He finishes by saying Ed Balls. I love that. He's clearly tried to search for this fucking movie in Hindi and has just typed it into the Google review. <laughs> How lost did he get? How old are you? How deep into that window do you get? It's like, this seems like a lot of work to go to to just search for a simple thing. <laughs> so yes, um, so Matt, you awkward slice of early naughty CGI. Why this? Why you do this? Why do you do us like this? Why select this? Okay, so I, I come from the land where... Mystery Science Theater 3000 is a thing. You mm. know, it's people ripping over bad shit and just having a good time mm. with it. This is that. But it also actually, unbelievably, has pretty good martial arts in it. So it's fun to watch. <laughs> it's fun to make fun of the source material in a way that you were making fun of it yourself when you watched the source material. or if, Even if you hadn't seen mm. uh, the Tiger and Crane Fist, you'd just seen whatever, you know, 36 Chambers. They're, they're always those characters. It was all overdubbed, and all the audio yeah. was done at different times. So this was just a little, mm. I would say modern, but not really, because this is already back to 2002, but a modern kind of riff on that, and I, I absolutely love it. I get yeah. that it's bad, it's, it... but it really is. Like, mm. you listen to the actors at the time going, mm, hey, come over here yes. into my side <laughs> room. And then they all start yeah. saying, and that's real. It, it, that is the case. The Shaw brothers, in particular, and all those people who sort of used to import martial arts movies from the West and dub them over for release in cinemas, did used to use these most extraordinarily broad accents most of the time. And there would always be a character in those old movies who's like the eunuch mm. or something who supports <laughs> the king, who's the evil one. And they would always dub them in with this most sort of terrible, terrible. They can voices. always fly <laughs> because they've got magic powers because of their nobles. <laughs> that's why we distrust them yeah They're flying ah oh, simpler times back then back when you knew who you couldn't trust <laughs> it's worth pointing out that the conceit of this movie is that this guy what's his name I need to... steve, steve odekirk steve odekirk yes yeah, steve yeah. odekirk yes what he's done is he's taken the movie tiger and crane fists aka savage warriors savage warriors he's taken that he's spliced his own face into various shots somewhat awkwardly dubbed over every single character oh he's the fun wars guy yeah oh he's I garbage <laughs> he is truly a pile of garbage i mean i love this <laughs> definitively but i looked at everything else he's done he's responsible for writing the stupid bruce almighty and the follow-up to that <laughs> he 
is a bad writer. Yes, he does appear to be, and we will come more onto that later. Yeah. But for now, I'm going to ask that we all get together. He wrote Cowboys and Aliens. Yeah, we're all going to get. He wrote together, Ace Ventura, and we're coming we're to Nature Calls anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the second one. Oh. We're all going to get together. Wasn't that the one in the in in like Africa? Yes. Yes. Oh. That was one way he goes. Not Africa. I think it's Asia. He's okay. In. It was just bad. I think. It's Africa. Well, yeah, he starts. Not, because I know it's. It is Africa. Yeah, he starts in Asia because he's in that yeah. temple with the slinky. Yeah. Everything. Look, I need us to go through <laughs> the plot of Ace Ventura. No, I need us to go through the plot of Kung Pao. Enter the fist. Yes. Mm. Well, I think Matt, as it's uh, yeah. as it's your baby, you should lead the way, yeah. and we can yeah. t- we can tag along. Right. Yeah, I've seen um, Tiger and Crane Fist as well, and I have to say oh, something right. ahead of time. The jokes aren't that far from the original. I mean, the, <laughs> the creepy old man and stuff that's coughing, it's all really real. But yes, this movie starts um, like a lot of traditional martial arts films. We're uh, introduced to a family. There's a baby. <clears throat> mm. We don't really know what's going on yet. But knock, knock, knock on the door. And Uh-oh. in comes <laughs> Master Pain. <laughs> oh, Master shit. Pain and his croonies are looking for the chosen one so yep. the, oh, i think the first line is something along the lines of master pain what do we do open the mouth and they look inside yeah. and the mark of the chosen one is that he has a face and a weird mouth with teeth on his tongue <laughs> <laughs> that is correct yeah and uh, master pain has brought with him terrible naughty's editing <laughs> <laughs> with flash cuts <laughs> uh, and some of the worst CGI Gee, look I've out. ever seen of baby fighting <laughs> <laughs> of all the baby fighting scenes it's definitely in the, the top and bottom three <laughs> yes he kills the whole family and uh, goes to kill the baby with a big knife and the baby says and the baby says no not today pang yeah. the pain yeah and then son of mask happens <laughs> <laughs> the whole film condensed into a, a lovely two minute <laughs> sequence that ends with the baby being thrown out of the house via an explosion. Yes, I think yes. so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then one of the greatest opening scenes of cinematic history, the baby rolling down the hill. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. For a very long time. <laughs> so good. Oh, man. Um, and after that, it cuts forward to, what, 180 years when the Chosen's fully grown up. And <laughs> Yes. So Strong Bad is narrating the life of Steve Odekirk, the Chosen. I think it's Strong Bad. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm going for it. It's definitely Strong Bad. <laughs> but, he, but he says that he is now on a, on a journey, on a quest, yes. on, a, on a kung fu quest to, figure, to find out who killed his family and then to kill them. Hmm. And that's yeah. it. Which leads and he to does. Really Some people, cool he kills a whole bunch of people. Right. Yeah. With the which one? With the plug. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best. He's beaten the hell out of everyone. It's just to kind of introduce how badass he is. But he punches the right. guy in the stomach, and a perfect circle flops out. Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He's that good. <laughs> and um, it's all in the wrist. And he eventually makes his way to a martial arts school, where he meets yes. old martial arts teacher. Master. A martial character. arts school where all those movies used to happen. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a big fan yes, of means... Master Tang. He's um he was in Fist of Fury Part Two, a, a an official oh, sequel Lord. to the original Bruce Lee's Fist of Fury. <laughs> to the official, the official <laughs> sequel to the unofficial original film. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, excellent. Okay, yeah. well he's there, and he um. Oh fuck! You know what? I don't know any of what happens in this. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. I he mustn't take the reins bug. of this plot as if I'm able to take it anywhere at all, because I don't know. Is it? Does he tell him to go fight a cow? That happens. <laughs> See, you missed the subtleties of it. The funniest <laughs> things in the world happen in that, because he's, he's old and he's sick and he's forgetful. <laughs> and it's all of that stuff that they just keep, like, you know, really mystery science theatering, you know, his <laughs> stupid-ass mis- dialogue of, why have you come to me in the... <clears throat> <laughs> it's a picaresque character study. It so it sure is. Well, he's he wants information on how to find. Is it Master Pang or Pain? Pain. Pain. Yes, yeah, Pain. That's good. Well, he yeah, he's looking for directions <laughs> to get to the House of Pain. 
and <laughs> right. um, there's a bit of opposition within the martial arts school. There's a guy who's been trained to to do the opposite of fighting. So uh, um, so when he loses, oh, yeah. he thinks he wins, and he keeps wanting to fight the chosen. There's a sister of that guy. I'm gonna say I don't know. Who, Maybe <laughs> Ling. Yeah. Ling. Yeah. Oh yes, that yeah. character. Great. <laughs> I don't understand why people have to die. Wee wee wee. <laughs> no, Wimplow is the best, and the the character Chia Yong Lu, he has been in like 200 martial arts films, including wow. like he did like <laughs> stunts for Jackie Chan or maybe Jet Li or somebody. But yeah, so, it, wait, 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 wait! Somebody death. does stunts for Jackie Chan? No, oh, sorry, it was Jet Li, <laughs> not Jackie Chan. But he was in a Jackie. Oh, he was okay. in like uh, Legend of the Dark Master and stuff. Oh, cool! Face the foot style. How'd you like it? Oh yeah! Try my nuts to your fist style. Oh! So yeah, he, he loses quite a lot to the chosen, and despite thinking he's winning, and uh, eventually, uh, old, uh, you have to tell me his name because like Paul, there's a lot of information that Master I wasn't Tang. able to retain. Master Tang. <laughs> Just think and... of that that orange drink that, from the eighties, right? Tang. Oh yeah, that the astronauts like. Yeah, astronaut <laughs> drink. Think astronaut. Oh brilliant! So Astro- Buzz Aldrin. Astronaut drink. <laughs> so That's Buzz what... Aldrin goes up a hill. Yeah. Well, we meet Miss. We meet Master Payne again and he's he's uh demonstrated that he's pretty much invulnerable to human blows and uh the chosen says oh shit how can i do that i probably just fight him immediately and everyone around him goes no no don't, don't do that that's ridiculous <laughs> you're crazy you lunatic yeah. get out of here i hate you <laughs> have sex with me and yeah. and then he trains a lot right he trains he gets some yeah. people to wail on him with sticks which doesn't work oh yes that's right <laughs> he's doing push-ups by just using his breath to lift his body yeah yes, he's, yeah he's pretty good he's just not as good as master pain at this time yeah master pain yeah. is invulnerable except for two spots the two little uh pyramids on him so mm. he's just like whatever dude yeah he has two pyramids yes. on him. very small they're not to scale no they're not to scale they're to scale if it were like an ant world <laughs> yeah an ant pharaoh but he gets knocked out, and when he wakes up, there is a mysterious one-breasted woman who oh, yeah. warns him basically just not to fight Betty, and then d- that just goes away. Her name oh, is yeah. And then he fights Whoa. Betty. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, listeners at home, Master, uh, Master Payne changes his name to Betty. Yeah, let's not oh, forget. Oh, yeah. Call me <laughs> Betty. Just, just to clear up any confusion at home, just in case. Now, is that when he fights the cow? Yep, he fights a cow. Yes. The chosen one fights a cow. It's Betty's um, cow. Yes, oh, it, is, it is Betty's cow. Yeah. That's that's fair. It's it's, it's guarding not just his a realm. cow. Also, yeah. we should point out the cow is possessed of martial arts abilities. It's not just a fucking cow that he just runs into a field and starts wailing on. Although we all know what that's like. <laughs> that was the second worst piece of CGI in this film. <laughs> <laughs> ba- After... Baby martial arts. <laughs> it was close. Oh, yeah, baby martial arts. <laughs> um, yeah, and then he makes he... it to master to Betty. Sorry, it's confusing. I can yes see the issue here. Just, just remember the song, Black Betty, Bam Bam, oh Black Betty. So he makes it to Black Betty, Bam Bam, <laughs> and gets beaten. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He gets beaten, and Ling's father comes in to save him. But Master yeah. Betty has, um, <laughs> he has the old swinging claw thing on a chain, which he uses to kill Ling's <laughs> father and really hurt Unbeatable. Steve Odekirk, the Chosen. It might be one yeah. of the best scenes too, because he's just like chosen one learned an important lesson that day the black claw of death hurts really badly and he just starts getting torn to shit in that that river yeah yeah (laughs) it looks painful it's it it doesn't look like a pleasant instrument uh, a pleasant instrument of death i will say that after and after that yeah the the dad dies and then is does the master tang die as well he gets quite sick Master Ting uh, is back to fight another day. Um, so oh, we, yeah. Okay. I think, are we at the point now where we get to the Simba? Scene? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we are. Okay. Yes. He goes outside and he speaks to a giant, giant lion in the sky. The animated lion. Mushu Fasa. Yes, giant animated lion. <laughs> it's, very, it's very clever. <laughs> uh, voiced by David Prowse. The reverse happened. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember any of the advice he gets. No, I don't know. I couldn't even understand the line. I'm like, okay, it's the one from Jung- not Jungle Book, uh, the Simba, you know. Yeah. Uh, the lion. The, the, the lion cat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Toy Story. I know. He's Mushu Fasa. I... <laughs> the Chosen is Cho Simba. That's about all you need to know from that. Right. He says something about looking up at the stars. That's where the, the secret to his thing will be. And it's a metaphor. So check out. <laughs> Watch out for that later. Yeah. 
<laughs> I think there's oh. a bear that steals honey and a kid rides on him. It's all lost. It's very, it's very complex stuff, very layered. And they get... So after that, he then... Uh, he finds a bunch of his friends dead. He comes back and finds Wimplo, Ling, Master Tang, and his dog all heavily injured. But all oh, okay. and oh, it's yeah. one of the finest scenes in <laughs> comedy movie history. He just goes, finds each one of them. They die and come back to life about 17 times. And <laughs> he runs backwards and then forwards around in a big circle. And it just Chosen keeps on one. happening. Chosen yeah. One. And, yes. then, and then that was when I realized there was 40 minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, actually. I was like, oh, I thought this was closer to the end. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Well, we've got a nice long training montage because he's decided that the pyramid spikes are the weak points. So he practices on a bunch of wooden dam- uh, dummies how to pull those out, mm. um, messing up his hands. Classic yes. um, Kung Fu cinema. Classic, <laughs> exactly. So yes, uh, there's a bunch of stuff. The Chosen One confronts Betty at the temple, and they fight. And then it says the evil council shows up. Oh yes, they're French aliens, that's right. They're French. <laughs> Stinky pits and all, baby. As a lover of this film, I can admit that was bad. I mean, the stupid speaker coming out playing the classic French pop song. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. It's, yeah. it's cool. Oh, that's that's right. At this stage, he uses his tongue to defeat of the course. French. Yeah. To call upon the French's sense of honor mm-hmm. and self-respect to yeah. to abort the invasion. And they do. Totally. It worked. <laughs> yeah. Betty has a beautiful death scene because it looks like he finally glows white. And he's, you know, his tongue has made the French aliens leave. And he gets on him and he's grabbing the pyramids that are to scale for the ants. And he, yeah. <laughs> it looks like he gets his butt kicked again. He just gets kicked and he falls down. And we're like, oh, that's it. Like, this is going to keep going on. But yeah. no. <laughs> Instead, arterial spray. <laughs> uh, we all like a bit of arterial spray. Yeah. It, yeah. It's under pressure. <laughs> it's it, yeah, very very in keeping with the Chinese classic. But un, <laughs> unlike the Chinese classic, it doesn't end as soon as Betty is dead. What happens? Yeah, is, unfortunately. <laughs> what happens is we we then get a trailer to a sequel for Kung Pao Two. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, Kung Pao, which is now being made next year apparently, or some year. It's what? been being made since two thousand three. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so we're probably uh, twenty fifteen. He was it was fit announced then. it was in the works. He'd have to so. hire somebody else. He's <laughs> lost his fitness, I guarantee it. I saw him on Internet Movie Database. He looks like a warped pile of a man. So Yeah. No more <laughs> pretending and to it's be It's been Bruce. twelve years. Yeah. He seems twelve to be years focused. ago I was actually alright. <laughs> you were Tom Cruise. <laughs> I was, I had to give it up. Bad for me. Bad for me n- n- shins. That concludes the plot, and I just wanna I think I could summarize my feelings for this film quite neatly because, you know, I, I do love sort of old martial arts films and I've really enjoyed sort of overdubbing sort of things like that before. That's been quite amusing and there's really good ways of doing it. I think my problem with the film, and I don't quite know how to say this like a film critic, it's hard to imagine Roger Ebert saying this, but I really dislike Steve Odekirk's face. Mm. <laughs> I just found his face annoyed me. Well, um, and... I just found his style of humour wasn't quite in keeping with my own. And I think that's just the issue I had with it. I mean, the best critics out there would come, would have that intuitive reaction. But then <laughs> post hoc, they'd construct something. They'd just go home to their little den. And be like, oh, they talk ed- about editing. the mise-en scene. Yeah. Um, really, all they want to say is, I fucking hate, hate that guy's face. face. No, I'll never forget. <laughs> Roger Moulton, he was just like, um, Leonardo DiCaprio looks like wet dough. So I hate all these movies. <laughs> That's a direct <laughs> quote from him. Check it out. Look it up. <laughs> That's amazing. So clearly, I'm putting too much thought into this whole film criticism <laughs> business. Let it come easy, baby. We can bring back the 70s. <laughs> if you don't like someone, just say it. model. I laughed half the time, I will say. Okay. And, and I found that there was a relentlessness to some of the jokes that wore me down often. Hmm. Um <laughs> To, to That's the, what you want to hear. Maybe the fifteenth time the the ling. I'm too tired to not laugh at this thing came came on. That bugs me so In, fucking I, much. I was laughing like a man who was being interrogated by the Stasi and had just been woken up for the fifteenth hour in a row. I just I, I just didn't know. I didn't know who I was anymore. Just thought I felt that this was funny now. Uh, but I did, I did laugh a lot in the first half of the film, especially, and I thought the second half of the film really dragged. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of critics did say that this is a joke that maybe ran on a bit long at 
I mean, it's only a what is it? It's an hour and twenty minute movie. Mm-hmm. But it's I find that comedy in general. I have a problem with comedy films quite a lot. There's very few that I really love, and I do mm-hmm. find that it's difficult to maintain comedy over such a long time. You know, even if it's a really funny comedy that you absolutely love. There is a fatigue that sets in that the best comedies sort of mediate by then putting in something else for a while. But yeah, it, it can be difficult to make a premise like this last for that long. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. And you know, you guys know I love this. I, I mean, I know it's bad, <laughs> but I love it. But it's sure. because of the little things. I'll throw out just right. a couple, like the toe chopped off part where the guy's like, listen, if you don't listen to Betty, you're going to get your big toe chopped off. Trust me. And then the camera goes to his foot and it's like hemorrhaging blood. It's little <laughs> shit like that. Um, yeah. That's a lot of nuts. The bug yeah. that keeps going into Master Tang's mouth. I mean, I just, the overall, there's so many delightful moments that make me laugh. Mm. I get over the baby rolling down the hill and the cow <laughs> and stuff. I just, I, mean, I ignore all yeah. that crap and I keep I it. loved the baby rolling down the hill. Yeah, that well, was the, quite The funny. way the lady helped. <laughs> Push him a little further down, like, oh, so cute. That was great. Yeah. The, there's something so shit about the fact that it was obviously a, a dummy with that sound <laughs> yes. that just didn't end. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it was it was ridiculous, and it was over the. It's almost like anti comedy where it stops being funny and then it mm. starts being funny again because it goes on for yes. so long relentlessly. Some of the best bits from this film um, are moments yeah. like that where they really try your patience, and then eventually it, it's just it's just great. You're laughing. <laughs> Yeah, you're laughing deliriously, or no, you're delirious and laughing. Oh my god, that part we skipped over is where um, Ling and Betty are just making noises at each other. She's yeah, and he's like yeah, yeah. I. I, I wrote that down as a good thing. And to be honest, this is... I'm, I f- don't know how you're going to feel about me, Paul, after this, but this is one of my longest list of good things ever oh my Ooh, in gosh, OGT history. You. Because well, there were just look. so many tiny details and, and, <laughs> and jokes in that first... And this is, this is the thing. There was about a ratio of, of, of good to bad jokes, about one to ten. Every, for every <laughs> ten bad jokes, I laugh once. But there are about a thousand jokes in there. So there's, there's yeah. just the longest list. All right. Well, there's not much to really talk about here. It's very yeah. subjective comedy, and I think we've given a good idea of what it is. I've explained, I think, in my own crap way why I disliked it. But let's... <laughs> I have I have got a list of jokes that worked for me, so how about we quickfire? Quickfire. I, I actually like the, the very sudden way in which the dad was dispatched at the beginning of the film. Um, I <laughs> yes, mean, it's, I love that. It's, that was great. I mean, I mean, a lot of this is original footage, right? So mm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what is original and what isn't. So if you... Oh, I think we're going to have to compl- compliment the original. Yeah. Otherwise, this is, my list is going to be even shorter. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I mean that, you know, we've got to, we've got to decide what kudos goes to the original and what goes to Steve <laughs> Odeco. But no nope, yeah. big pile. Wait, wait, wait guys, let's just start all over and watch both of them, and then we'll start re-recording. It. That's true. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> put it on pause. Well, I watched the Matrix Revolutions, so I don't know what I was doing. Oh, you! <laughs> I did that God again. Damn it, every time. Yeah, but it was great. You don't really see it, but he's just standing in front of Master P- Master Pain, and uh, there's a mm. little jerk of the arm, and something obviously is stuck in his stomach, and he just drops drops like a sack of yeah. shit <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> he does. It's classic. It's just like down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, does it stab that the heart good. or something? <laughs> uh, Matt, do you have one? Oh, uh, how about uh, okay? I'll go for the the little bug that keeps going <laughs> in Master Tank's mouth. So he's oh, trying yeah. to like have the speech, <laughs> and every time he's just about there, they superimpose this bug going in his mouth. Yeah. So he'd be, <coughs> <coughs> and it it makes me cry. In <laughs> good stuff. Um. I really did like that opening domestic scene. It was well lit, it was pleasant, and mm. when they originally spoke Chinese, I found it very reassuring. Like, oh, yay, actual <laughs> actual Cantonese. Fantastic. Psych. I can... <laughs> <laughs> I really like the line, raised by various rodents, when he's talking about how he was done. It's just various rodents. There's a nice, a nice sound to that. I've got to say, the effect of having a guy having a hole punched in him was quite good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, considering the CGI in this movie, seeing like you know, just seeing people through the hole in his chest. That, yeah. Good. Ronald and Chaco came from that. Um, I would throw out the overdubbing, um, just as a really good thing. 
Um, mm. It's just one particular scene where they don't have to, but the dog's like mouth moves. They wait like a good oh, yeah. 10 seconds and then, Roo! <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh yes that was one of my good things is i really i laughed every time the dog wolf was incredibly out of sync that was that was good because they would linger on the dog for so long and you knew the bark was coming that was yeah i really like that yeah some good dark place moments i think uh intentionally so yeah. there was one scene every time it was either master tang or or betty's arm swept through the air there was a whooshing sound accompanying it <laughs> oh shit yes goes, i have that too why have you yeah. come here <sighs> to me and why have you come to me yeah it was yeah fucking good oh yeah i mean it's a very old gag the idea that a character is talking for ages and then a single word gets dubbed over yeah. it but i i enjoyed it here oh ones are the best yeah the old shit ones are the best <laughs> <laughs> i like the the <laughs> flashback it was like I was told there would be a chosen one, and then it whoa, 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 go back in time, and it's like two, it's like him oh, younger. Yeah, it's like, there will oh, be yeah. a chosen one, and then we whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, back. So good. Somebody had squeaky shoes, and they kept doing it in one scene, and it was just it was ridiculous, oh, yeah. and it just car- kept carrying on, and I couldn't yeah. help myself. It was funny. Went low. It was dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I found the tongue thing fairly annoying, largely because it just seemed like Terrible. the sort of thing that he would do, is that Steve guy. But after after he shows it to the master, the master just says, I should not have asked. <laughs> and that made me laugh. <laughs> the music. Every time he calls himself Betty, but then there's the whole thing about, um, I think it's Master Ting, he's like, he'll turn on his big butt song and beat you up. But they play the, I've got big butts and i cannot lie oh, i like big butts. oh yeah. i love that guy the guy with the boombox i really <laughs> yeah. love him and his he's so his joyous performance. yeah he's so joyous and happy i really enjoyed him he made me smile well that fight between tang and betty where the camera's panning left and right and it pans right and it just gets that guy in shot jamming out to, to cervix a lot <laughs> such a good reveal the exchange i'll do it in your dreams oh <laughs> it's really great oh <laughs> sound coming out of oh, tank <laughs> going with the song things when they start playing black betty there's a part where steve is kind of like gyrating and doing like this cool move and betty goes mm. i could dance like that <laughs> if i me. wanted yeah if i wanted <laughs> right god it's oh. the best yeah after having betty show up in a town and he just beats up all these people who are wailing on him with sticks it cuts to oh. them walking through the town with the mayor going, it is a great honor having you beat up random people in my town. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's that. a great line. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I really need to get better at writing notes so I can know what they're saying afterwards. Yeah. What have I got? Enough to stop laughter. Does that hit, mean anything? Oh, anyone? yes. It's the joke. But first, a joke. And then he tells, tells this oh. joke, like, which I can't remember. And then it cuts to every, this whole room laughing. And then a hard cut to a close-up of Betty's face going, Enough! And everyone stops. Oh, that's it. What do you get when you cross an owl with a bungee cord? My ass. <laughs> Enough! When, when the Chosen is getting his lackeys to well on him with sticks in order yeah. to see if he's equal to Betty, he says, do not stop until I give the secret signal or dramatically <laughs> throw you to the ground and request a towel. Mirroring, mirroring what happened with Master Betty. Um, I loved uh, when he first meets Ling, Master Tang is like, she's shy at first, and she's got this really shy face, but she quickly flashes her boobs at him. Oh, yes. He said, say? <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I, I seem to remember, s- that was that was made okay for me by then, Stephen's reaction to it. Right. He's um, like, what? I'm just going to call him Stephen. <laughs> um, Mr. Odekirk's reaction to it. Paul, what did I mean by, <laughs> what did I mean by repeated, hmm? Oof. Mm. I have no idea. Mm. Okay, the next one. What did I mean by <laughs> around the big bloody spot? Oh, maybe the part in the sequel where he's sitting on the ground and his nipples are getting electrocuted. I think it's earlier than that. Maybe it was um I wonder when he was poking the guy. Uh, anyway, and Oh, when he's, he's rubbing one. he's rubbing that guy who's dying. Yeah, maybe. And maybe he's like, that. if I do this and he's rubbing his his breast, but around yeah, the big bloody spot. Yeah. That was it, yeah. 
That was it. Yes, please don't. I'm injured around the big bloody spot. <laughs> oh, it. it was one of the best. Yeah, it was like a topical view down. And he's like, I'm mortally injured. And the guy's like, where? He's like, a <laughs> big bloody spot. Yeah, <laughs> that was exactly it. Okay. Great. Thanks, guys. That one was a group effort. <laughs> we got there. What'd he say? <laughs> um, <laughs> I One of my favorite jokes in this was the red black clothes scene. Oh my where god, that was so good. He keeps the guy the colour of this guy's clothes keeps changing colour from shot to shot. Mm. And must and Betty's t- talking about something about the chosen and he'll be saying, And then mm. we will get him. Now your clothes are black and <laughs> it's set up with this pretense of him doing a magic trick where he's this great magician changing the colour of this guy's clothes at will. Right. And the guy's it's, so delighted. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And then we will get him black now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really clever. good it's very, very clever good. the ventriloquist it's because like the guys had no dialogue so they just add the dialogue again we are ventriloquists we <laughs> practice every day and then they aren't moving their mouths at all so the best part comes when they open the door and betty's there and betty's like ah ventriloquists and he isn't moving his mouth either <laughs> it's brilliant <laughs> Um, I have that there's a moment where I can't remember who it is, but somebody has asked, do you understand? And they nod a whole bunch of times. And then after a while, I just say, no. <laughs> sure. Okay, everyone. Uh, how about with a rock or something? Doesn't he say, like, it, it's some muttering thing that somebody's saying, I'll, I'll kill him. Or rock or something. It's, yeah, it's something like that. I can't remember. I'll kill him. I'll kill him dead. Like with, with a rock or something. Like a, like a stone. I think uh, it was just the sort of grumpiness of not yeah. something. I mean, I really liked the Kenneth Williams that Steve Odekirk was going for with Betty. A lot of yeah. mm, matron <laughs> sort of stuff going on there. It's very, it was very pleasing. I wouldn't mind having that on headphones 24 hours a day. Or at least in my darker <laughs> moments. Somebody, I think, who's been mortally wounded is uh, warning um, the main character about the song that he plays. Um, and he says, be careful of that song. He beat you yeah. up whilst he plays that it. The, that was the part where um, Tang was on the ground in the going back and forth between Ling, Master Tang, and the dog. Mm. And that was one of his death moments. Yeah. Right before he died, he said, <laughs> beware of him and his yeah. big butt song. It was so good. <laughs> just looks so like he beats you up whilst he's playing it. It was a very stable way of... <laughs> it made it sound so feeble. Way of putting that. Yeah. <laughs> After Master Payne declares that he wants to be called Betty, there's a scene, I think, immediately following that where he's just wearing a Betty name tag. And it's very obviously <laughs> superimposed on, but it was a nice, like, airplane hot shots kind of <laughs> joke. Okay. Yeah, and I thought, psych- um, there is a scene right after that, too, where he's at the table and he announces it to everybody again. And Steve Odenkirk gets the opportunity of saying, Isn't Betty a lady's name? <laughs> to which he loses his shit. Yeah, there was something naive about the way that was said. That was really great. Very formal. The whole tiny net thing was great. I fucking loved it. He's running and he gets this very small net thrown on him. It falls down to his shoulders and he immediately struggles and falls, like, hits the earth. And he's, like, struggling with this tiny bit of net just over his face. And then eventually he just pokes, he pushes his lips through the very wide mesh of this tiny net to try and breathe you know to try and <laughs> sc- scrabble for air yeah it's, it's just so stupid but it, it really worked and i know we and and the final one is we've talked about it in passing a couple of times but that's a lot of nuts really is fucking great and if you oh, haven't no. sampled it till now paul please just sample it now so everyone, <laughs> everyone it can enjoy it i'll take a pound of nuts that's a lot of nuts now let's hear from the og team Oh yeah, the OG team. Matt, do you want to do an extended OG team? That we can... OG team! <laughs> Fuck, that was good. Love it. <laughs> I used to wrestle, um, you know, in a past life. Ah, uh, that explains it. <laughs> I Can you do the thing where you swallow some water, where you take a mouthful of water and then spray it out? <laughs> Wait, now. <gasps> Very good. Went all over my mic, but it did it. It You're a pro. Somehow. <laughs> for that, for that wrestle, that wrestle call alone, I'm going to make you the second ever honorary OGT VIP. Oh, shit. <laughs> I've always been. I've been working my whole life to become a VIP. I've been training. I've been 
putting in the, the hours, you know. I've You're... been pulling out weird metal things. <laughs> <laughs> you get your badge in the post, and you can join the other map in the group. If you go to any subway, they'll they'll fill your mouth with cheese. <laughs> It's a very That's irrespect- irrespective of OG team. That's just a thing <laughs> they do. Um, okay, so that OG team. Christopher Bond uh, of Baby Beard fame. He says, How is this a one good thing episode? This is an amazing film. Quotes. Clever <laughs> idea. You say clever idea. Cool use of green screen. French aliens. I assume all of that was shouted. <laughs> if you have a problem with that, Chris, you can get back to me. You fuck off. And he also did, he gift us. He, uh, he gift us with, That's a lot of nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Which, as we've mentioned, is quite good. He's a hero. Well, Sean, uh-huh. uh, another member of the Baby Beard troupe, came, oh. came back with this and said, watching this film was the price I paid for what was otherwise a mighty fine date. So <laughs> To have a mighty fine date around this film, I think, is quite the achievement. <laughs> what, have you ever taken someone on a date to watch a film that was then, that then transpired to be utterly inappropriate for a date? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mine I was took, that I stupid... T- uh, um, we just talked about it in Africa. Um, Ace Ventura. It was a terrible huh. Oh, right. I mean, just, <laughs> that I blame him directly. I could have gotten late that night, but no. It was a monkey nope. fucking butt talking and arrows in the butt. Nope. Nope. Uh. <laughs> I had a relatively strange one. I had an, an American um, lady visiting from Texas, and it soon transpired we had agreed to meet in Manchester, and for some reason we found there wasn't much of a nightlife on whatever night we were there in the middle of winter. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided to go see a movie and so I decided to take her to since she was in England the most British thing I could find which was My Cousin Rachel which was playing at the time right? which uh, might have been a little bit too stately really for the um, <laughs> to really for a holiday movie I think, <laughs> You were representing a a I was representing and that film is English as fuck yeah. I thought you were going to say I Daniel Blake <laughs> and honestly Paul if you'd have had that option I'd have hope, hoped you'd have taken it I mean, that is the more English film. <laughs> For me, I took someone to see Crank. <laughs> and she didn't like it. So um, it was like, you got laid but during. But sexy yeah. moments, remember? That was that bit when he fucked Amy Smart in front of a bus of Chinese tourists. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was that good. That was sexy. <laughs> I, I, on oh, the other Jesus. hand, uh, <laughs> on that day, kindled my ever raging firing love for Neville Dean Taylor, which is still going to this day. Mm-hmm. So who's <laughs> the real winner? I don't need you. I've got Neville Dean Taylor. <laughs> Put down the cocaine. <laughs> and then they did fuck you that time, so... Okay, now, last one. Before <laughs> before we finish, Christopher Bond replied to Sean. He said, you didn't like this? You didn't like this? <laughs> Has the world gone mad, he asks, lamenting. And the, and the two have not stopped fighting since. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, physically. They've been wrestling for the last two days. Tune into Baby Beard for some of that sexual tension. <laughs> Thanks, oh, OG team! Thanks, OG team! Thanks, OG team! <laughs> Jesus. Very good. <laughs> He's a master. Okay, let's talk about the one better thing. The one better thing. You've got you've got the one, I think. I, I think that I, well, that is the thing is I think this is the sort of natural place to go to. It is um it's Kung Fu Hustle. Um Ooh, yeah. a film directed yes. written, uh, directed, produced, written and starring uh Stephen Chow. And it's, it is a very affectionate sort of send-up of martial arts films, whilst also being a really fucking good martial arts movie. Um, yeah. The first thing that comes to mind is that beautiful set, this pigsty alley with um, all the characters. It's a beautiful-looking film. It, it's got some really great fight scenes in it. That first one where the guy with the long stick and the guy with the rings around his arms fight the whole crowd is just brilliant. And it's really stylish as well, that sort of axe gang. It's really cool. I kind of want to watch this movie now. Oh, my um, God. And and the the, the landlady and all the cool mythical characters that come to pass. It's maybe one of the finest martial arts films of all time. It really is, and it has a whole bunch of retired 70s Hong Kong action people in it. It does. um... It has the old Bruce Boytation people. You name it. It, They're (laughs) in it. It's... He got back all the best. It's mm. amazing. Absolutely. And yet it also is very modern and it felt very much in place because at that time in the early noughties, you had sort of big wuxia films like um, uh, Hero and, you mm-hmm. know, uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And, you know, in America, you had the Matrix movies. And it has, like, I think the group fight scene is um, better than the group fight scene in the Matrix Reloaded of all the Smiths. You know, it has, it's just oh, yeah. better fought, you know, and better staged. It's... um. Oh, it just it fits into <laughs> such a perfect time and place there, um, and it's oh. one of the best things to come out of that time. And it's really funny, 
it's also really funny. Um, it has a great sense of humor, and Stephen Chow's really likable in the lead. She's yeah. the best. Yeah, really playful and inventive. <laughs> mm. Excellent. Are you, are, you, are you sure it's better than the Matrix Reloaded scene? Because you can't <laughs> tell when Keanu Reeves become, actually becomes CGI. Hey, even without those shitty CGI moments, that's a really good scene in the Matrix Reloaded, which we will cover when at some point we review the Matrix Revolutions, I imagine. Oh. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Who wants to go next? Who's got a better thing for me? So I don't know if there is a one better thing, because there isn't anything quite like this. It is True. sort of... Uh, <laughs> amalgamation of uh of things like uh you know just riffing mm. on old stuff but i do equate it a lot with like a mystery science kind of thing where we're just we're getting in there and we're making jokes about the original source material so i would say um if we just want more parody stuff uh things like kentucky fried mm. movie that has a great parody on um, mm. enter the dragon and and oh, yeah. maybe something like um uh they call me bruce which came out in the 80s but it's just uh it's it's funny. It isn't better, but I feel like if you loved this and you just wanted to watch more <laughs> stuff that's going off on it, that would be cool. Also, the Mystery Science Theater guys, they started this company called Rift Tracks where you can just get their yes. audio file and you play it over the top of popular movies. Mm, and they do that yeah. for Matrix and they do that for stuff <laughs> like that. It's pretty fun. You can see some highlights of that on YouTube. There's some people who do like best of Rift Tracks and nice. they've got some clips from the film with the their audio and it. it's it's really great and they've covered a couple of um ott things i think in yeah. their time very nice so yeah really good stuff obviously as matt said there isn't really much out there like it <laughs> kung fu hustle is probably the closest thing and i didn't really like shaolin soccer no. so if you just want to watch a kung fu movie have a lot of fun that's you know in a kind of different vein well a very different vein but it's just fun all the way through you're laughing almost as much and you come out maybe feeling a little bit better just watch legend of the drunken master yeah mm, good stuff because jackie chan is the uh you could say he's the tom cruise of the east <laughs> <laughs> no sorry um, you should see his risky business <laughs> he, he, ultimate action star funny to boot and everything is as playful and silly but mm. with some of the best martial arts i've seen in a movie <laughs> just a quick thing to avoid confusion um legend of the drunken master was the Drunken Master Two North American <laughs> title for just Drunken Master Two? Yes, but they are yeah. the same thing. Yes, the 1994 film, and it is great. That yeah. final sequence in like the foundry is really, it's really great. It's something that is it to Tony Joe talks about in every frame of painting. The way Jackie Chan always starts at the bottom and works himself up and earns his victories. Yeah. It's nowhere is it more sincerely felt, I think, than Legend of the Drunken Master. It's such a brilliant ascension. Yes, it's so great. That was the one better thing. <laughs> The one better thing. Matt, why don't you tell us how people can keep up with all the stuff you're doing? All you need to do is go to screenmayhem.com uh, or you can find me on Twitter at, um, at T Evil Twin Ghost. But Screen Mayhem is where you find everything you find. Paul Salt's awesome Woo! movie reviews. I <laughs> uh, write TV reviews, but I haven't been and I'm about to write a ton more. But also Cinema Bushido, The Clones Cast, yes. Screen Mayhem Show. We get lots of podcasts that talk about lots of the stuff you love. Yeah, great stuff. <laughs> and Paul, if they're um, if they're bored of quality content, how can they find out more about OGT? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a very good question, and I'm glad you've asked because the uh, the disaffected mob, the rabble, they've been growing ever since ever <laughs> since Brexit, and they want something just to meet their expectations for once. <laughs> so, OGT Pod, Twitter OGT Pod, Facebook forward slash OGT Pod. You can send us an email at gmail at OGT pod at gmail.com i was just thinking midway through that sentence how i was able to reel this off without thinking and then thinking that i was managed to disrupt <laughs> myself so that's great uh you can god i'm good at this yeah, fuck that's yeah awesome too. <laughs> i don't need this podcast <laughs> just gonna go be happy um, in public <laughs> i don't need any of you <laughs> i don't need any of you please follow us on yeah uh <laughs> you can subscribe to us on itunes if you haven't already for some reason but i think most people already have so it's a bit redundant to say that not sure why that's a thing on a lot of podcasts, but you can also recommend us to a friend or leave us a five star review on iTunes. That would be really, really helpful. And uh, that's the thing to do. Exactly. Do the five star thing. And if enough of you do it, you become trending yeah. and then the whole world knows OGT. We'll get 10 more listeners. Become rich and famous. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We'll all become like Justin Bieber or something. It's going to be great. We'll all get to meet yeah. Neil Kinnock in a bar. Yeah. It'll be great. Do not search for us on Instagram. Nobody does that. Don't. <laughs> 
We can't. We can't insta. <laughs> I refuse. It'll just be pictures of us watching. It's funny films if you go week. through the whole list. They're like, no, go to Yahoo. Mm. Go to Google Plus. You'll find us there. <laughs> um, you know, there's a car lot down the street. We advertise in their parking lot. Look there. We're all there's a flyer. It's gotten a lot of positive feedback. But, but of course, you know, Snapchat, uh, Instagram, <laughs> Tinder, Grinder. We're there. We're on Grinder as well. Um, we're doing excellent business. Does anyone use Snapchat for anything other than porn? I thought that was like how it sold itself. Is how it's to send one, butt pics. It's the one good ding dong. <laughs> oh, shit. If you want the one good ding dong, follow Check us on Snapchat. Yeah. yeah. At OGDD. Yes. And thank you, Matt. <laughs> for coming on I, i'm here to it's help. been a pleasure I'm here to help i'm a so- social media master yeah. no thank you guys so much if if that's the things yes this <laughs> has been a true delight it will go down in history i will tell everyone until the day i die to listen to one good thing with me on it um, <laughs> start there the people it's like it's like i met mr t and one of you are mr t i just We're would never forget it both of us together, together. are half of mr t yeah well, if I you sit... guys got together and you did your hair in a special way, you could look like <laughs> Mr. T together. Ooh. I'll be the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the fool. And thanks for introducing me to that film. I, I, I think I need to see it. <laughs> I yeah. think really it was good. It was good for us. Yeah. Yeah. We need that. That's happen. wonderful. <laughs> okay. I'm Paul Salt. I'm Paul Goodman. I am Matthew Goodman. And remember, the one good thing about Kung Pao is that it really was an awful lot of nuts. <laughs>